Hey everybody, assalamu alaikum. So today I'm going to be sharing with you guys, inshallah, my rebirth story and the story of how I became a Muslim. This has been my most requested video and something that a lot of people are curious about and I did really want to share it with you guys. Actually yesterday I did post a very emotional um, story of why I became a Muslim but I have since taken it down. So the reason for that was in the moment when I was sharing those things, I felt comfortable and I felt okay, but you know, a few hours after I posted it, I realized that the things I was sharing were, were extremely personal and I can still share my revert story while still keeping some things private and still keeping some things just for me. I think it would be better that way for my own personal safety because I have been through some pretty crazy things. And I also did just want to say Ramadan Mubarak to my Muslim subscribers. Inshallah, your Ramadan is going well, it is spiritually fulfilling and you are reaching your goals. And you know, inshallah, your fasting has been easy for you. And I'm keeping you guys all in my prayers and I pray that it will be a really awesome month for you guys, inshallah. So I'm going to get into my story now. And this is going to be a much shorter account than the one that I previously posted. Still getting um, all of the main details across on why and how I became a Muslim and why I chose Islam to be the religion that I follow. So I did just want to give you guys a quick background story of the beliefs that I was um, brought up with as a child and as a teenager, just so you can understand why Islam was something that I did feel so drawn to. So I am mostly Sicilian Italian, so kind of goes without saying that my family is super Catholic. When I was younger, I was raised going to a Catholic church up until I was maybe about four years old or so. So when I was about that age, my parents became very interested in the Bible. Um, so my parents had always kind of gone to the Catholic church and everything, but they never really read the Bible that much. So when they started to read and study the Bible, they kind of realized that the Trinity was not supported by the teachings of Jesus and um, the more and more they studied the Bible it kind of became evident to them that Jesus was just a man he was a human being and um, you know God gave him the power to do these miracles God gave him these messages to deliver to the world but he was not in fact God himself okay so at this point I already know that there is going to be some people watching this who are very upset and who are going to you know try to comment versus trying to comment Bible verses to tell me that the Trinity is real. Um, guys, I respect your beliefs, so I ask that you respect mine. I do not believe in the Trinity. My parents do not believe in the Trinity. And um, I'm not trying to convert you. I'm not trying to make you a Muslim. I'm just sharing my story, and I think that's pretty evident by the title. So again, you know, I respect you no matter what you believe, so please have some respect for me as well. Continuing. So long story short, my parents left the Catholic Church. And at this point, they stopped identifying with being Christian. So the other month, I did actually ask my parents what they identify with religiously. They don't feel that they are Christians in this modern day because they do feel that um, Jesus' teachings have been altered and changed, um, you know, with the concept of the Trinity and things like that. So they feel that they are like the Christians that existed at the times of Jesus. But um, like currently, they just identify as being strictly Bible-based. Why not my... I would just describe how I was raised as being Bible-based. Um, we celebrated Passover because that is something that my parents thought was important because Jesus himself observed Passover. Yeah, my parents studied a lot of the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. So another concept that I grew up with was the concept of head covering or hijab as we call it in Islam. So my mom does not cover her head when she's just out and about running errands or like with family or anything. Um, but when she does read the Bible and pray, or when they would have Bible studies and other women would come along as well, uh, the women would all cover their heads and, you know, cover their bodies and just, you know, practice covering and being modest. So at a young age, I would see that and I remember, for some reason, really, really identifying with the concept of hijab and with the concept of covering. I remember my mom bought me a scarf to cover my head with and it was like this really pretty pink sparkly scarf and you know when you play make-believe when you're younger and I would just pretend that I was like a woman from Palestine from back in the day and I would just you know wear my scarf and I would pray I don't know guys it's just the concept of hijab really really resonated you know something deep within me I was always drawn to the hijab and even you know and all through my life whenever I saw women wearing the hijab or when I saw them even wearing the niqab and being completely covered 
I thought it was so beautiful in a way that wasn't beautiful, if that makes sense. You know, when we wear the hijab and we cover up, we are actually hiding our beauty. We're suppressing our ego. We're suppressing our need to impress others and be, you know, materialistic. And I just thought that was so beautiful, you know, for a woman in this day and age where we are really just judged by how we look, um, for a woman to kind of rebel against that and to say no. I am living my life for God and I am displaying to the world that God comes before everything else. That is kind of my first connection with Islam, is with really connecting with the, with the hijab. So the second connection I had was I remember being a younger girl and one of my best friends was Muslim. And we were talking about like things that we believed and whatever. And everything she was saying really resonated with me. It was so, so similar to, you know, the things that were really written in the Bible and that my parents believed. It was just adding in the teachings of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the teachings of the Quran. So, you know, these things really just resonated with me. And that was my first introduction to Islam at a very young age. And it kind of just always stuck with me ever since then. So it was probably around age 13 that I realized that although I really respected my parents' beliefs, and there was a lot of things that I connected with, um, I did just feel like there was a little something extra that was missing. I really did kind of long for the community of having an actual religion, um, you know, a body of beliefs and, you know, a community around me that I could identify with. So I was kind of just researching a lot of religions um, with Islam always being in the back of my mind. You know, Islamophobia is so real and it's like I had nothing against Muslims. My family didn't have anything against Muslims. Um, but a lot of people do and so in my mind I was like you know and, and being in high school and everything too it's like how do I how do I make this change that seemed so epic and so big it just was a little bit overwhelming so I was researching other religions as well and they just none of them connected with me and I'm, I'm, and I'm grateful that I did so because now I understand where a lot of other people come from and their beliefs and i think that even if you don't follow religion it's still really nice for you to be educated about it just so you're not ignorant and you don't offend anybody so it was a really great learning experience for me i just did not identify um or agree with many other religions that i saw the only one that really stuck out to me was islam that time in my life i was like 13 14 years old and I just, I guess I wasn't ready to make such a change in my life. SubhanAllah, you know, everything happens for a reason. So ultimately what happened was I decided to become spiritual. And I'm not trying to offend anybody who's spiritual. But a lot of times, at least in my situation, what spiritual meant was I believe in God. I pray. But... I'm still going to do things that I want to do because they're not hurting anybody, right? That was my thought process, stuff for a lot, but that was my thought process. I was doing things that I guess any average old American teenager would do. In my teenage years, I went through a lot of stuff. There was a lot of troubles that I went through. Insecurity, which is normal for any teenager, but insecurity that was deeper and more intense than what a lot of people would go through. Um, because I struggled with issues like eating disorders, I struggled with an abusive relationship that um, I'm now diagnosed with PTSD because of. So to keep it short and sweet, I went through a lot and I was very depressed and I was very unhappy. And I prayed to God every single night. I never lost faith in God. I never stopped believing. I never doubted in an existence of God. I just felt so lost in my life and I had really, really bad friends. I had extremely self-destructive friends, friends who didn't care about me or my well-being, friends who encouraged me to experiment with things that were dangerous for my health, friends that encouraged me to not be a good person. I was turning into the worst version of myself the more and more I was hanging around with these people. But I guess, you know, when you're in that moment and you feel like, oh, if I, if I step away from these friends, you know, what's going to happen to me? I'm, I'm not going to have anybody. So I just kept hanging out with them and I kept 
spiraling more and more into this deeper and darker depression. And it's like, yeah, I, I was hanging out with these people, but I felt so alone. So there comes a certain point where they completely turn their backs on me. At this point, I'm realizing more and more how empty my life is. I, something is missing. So what did I do? I turned to Instagram and social media to fill this void. So when I was in high school, um, Tumblr was pretty popular. I gained a nice decent following of, you know, around 15,000 or more followers or whatever on Tumblr. So I kind of felt a bit of validation through that because as lonely as I felt in my real life, um, I would log onto this website and suddenly my inbox was full of messages and girls telling me how pretty I was and where did I get my outfit and how did I do my makeup and I felt really just a sense of validation. When Tumblr stopped being popular, I moved on to Instagram and it was the same thing. I was hiding behind the image of the girl that I created online because inside I felt empty, I felt lost, I felt hurt, I felt broken because of all these things that had happened to me. Again, they were pretty bad things. I'm not discussing it because I don't feel, per I don't feel um, comfortable having these things for the whole world to hear just at this moment. But I was pretty beaten and broken down. To make up for that, or to kind of hide that fact, I focused so much on my outer appearance. Makeup, full face of makeup every day, not leaving the house without it. Outfits that were showing off intimate parts of my body, because in my mind, I guess, I felt having a nice body and showing it off, that's gonna make people think my life is good, right? I don't know. It's stupid, but this is the mindset that so many people have. Oh, so, you know, after a while, it got to the point where I wasn't actually feeling happy anymore when people would message me and ask me something. I was kind of feeling a little annoyed, um, thinking like, because people would send me like, oh, where did you get this outfit or blah, blah, blah. And I would think to myself, there's people dying in this world. There's more important things to worry about. But at the same time, it's like, I'm feeding into that. I'm feeding into that message of you are as good as what you look like. And I was kind of becoming disgusted with myself that I was just another Instagram influencer promoting these stupid values that didn't even make any sense. Like there's people dying and starving and diseases, not only around the world, but in my own country. and. And I was posting about the latest eyeshadow palette. I'm not trying to offend anybody who is who likes makeup and everything. I still enjoy makeup. I still enjoy fashion. But I was living my life for material things. And it was starting to get to the point where I was so over it. This is, I was also married. And I did get married at a young age. A lot of people think that's crazy. It had nothing to do with religion. Or maybe it did because my parents are pretty old-fashioned and strict when it comes to things like that. So yes, I got married when I was 20 years old. I am still married to this day. And yes, my husband is also a Muslim. But anyway, I'll get to that in a little bit. So at this time now, I'm married, I'm with my husband, and he could tell that something wasn't right. I was crying all the time. I felt so empty. I felt meaningless. My... My depression was just through the roof and I was just not in a good place. And I tried therapy for a little bit and it was just not helping me get over my issues from the past and everything. And I was just truly not happy. So this is kind of the turning point of my story. I kept having dreams and they were pretty intense and vivid dreams. Some of them scared me, some of them made me feel comforted. Um, I don't want to go too much into detail because the imam at my uh, masjid, he told me that, you know, it's best to not even share these kind of dreams, like the details of them, um, because this is really God speaking to you. Um, but I had dreams of prophets in the Bible and prophets from the Quran talking to me and long story short, I was having dreams of me, you know, wearing the hijab, me being a Muslim. I had dreams of me literally inside of mosques, praying and feeling comforted and 
It was so bizarre and beautiful, subhanAllah. Because of these dreams, I started to research Islam more and more. So now I am at a point where I feel in my heart that I am a Muslim, but I was too scared to show the world. I'm too scared to start wearing the hijab and to be open and honest about the fact that I am a Muslim and this is my life now because I am starting to feel really happy and fulfilled. I had this image that I was still displaying to the world. It was not aligning with my beliefs and how I truly felt inside. I was nervous I was going to be judged because I had dealt with so many bullies and so much judgment before and I was just not emotionally ready to handle people's attacks. Like one day just for fun, you know, me and my family were interested. Um, I took like a DNA test and when I got my results back, I learned something kind of weird and shocking. So this kind of did also have a significant part in why I became so passionate about Islam was because when I got my results back, I had like a significant chunk of Middle Eastern ancestry in me from Saudi Arabia, which is the birthplace of Islam, subhanAllah. So I, so, okay, so here's the thing, and I just want to make this so abundantly clear. Islam is for everybody. If you're black, if you're white, if you're Arab, if you're Pakistani, if you're anything under the sun, it does not matter your skin color, your ethnicity, where your family is from. Islam is for everybody in the world if you want to be a Muslim. Um, the reason that I'm saying that this is so crazy is because my whole life Islam has resonated with me and I just, in my heart, I was like, I want to be a Muslim, like this makes sense to me. And then I'm getting these results back saying, oh, like, by the way, um, part of your ancestry is from the birthplace of Islam. Like that is, it was just crazy. There's so many signs and reasons, these dreams, these, you know, these DNA results and like, even just the beliefs that my parents raised me with, it's like everything was just pointing me right into the direction of becoming a Muslim. So I was like, okay, this is it. This is a sign. I'm done. I'm seriously done. I made a personal Instagram account because I didn't care anymore about makeup and fashion and I deleted all of my I deleted all of my old YouTube videos as well and I lost so many subscribers because people were probably thinking, what the heck is wrong with this girl? But I was finally felt free from the material things and I finally felt like it doesn't matter to me what brand my outfit is, what brand my purse is, you know, what kind of makeup I'm wearing. I just felt beautiful and secure in, in the deen and in my newfound faith. It was during the month of Ramadan of last year, subhanAllah, that me and my husband went to the mosque and we, we started talking to one of the brothers there. He gave us a copy of the Quran. Uh, he answered some questions. We practice we studied a lot and it was very hard for my husband because he grew up with parents that were very against muslims and islam um his parents aren't religious or anything but my husband was also kind of feeling the same way feeling empty feeling like his life was just like just working and going home and i mean we loved each other and we were happy with each other but overall we felt empty so yeah so we went to the mosque uh we took the shahada we fasted for the remainder of the month of Ramadan and I started to wear the hijab full time maybe like a week or two after that and since then my life has just changed for the better I feel so happy and fulfilled I truly feel like everything in my past was God telling me this is what the world has to offer you're in pain, you're being backstabbed you're being lied to, you're being used, you're being abused. And everything that came after me becoming a Muslim was God showing me, this is what I have to offer. SubhanAllah. Yeah, guys, that, that's the main story of how I became a Muslim. I went through all this pain, all this suffering, abuse, stalking, domestic violence, eating disorder, relying on social media to feel validated in this world. And now, here I am, happy, fulfilled, glowing like I, I really feel like I am just glowing from within I made so many amazing new friends I found I found peace and solace in the words of the Quran and I just feel so happy I truly feel like my whole life I was being shown Islam and I was being pointed to Islam and when I kind of turned my back on it because I wasn't sure God showed me exactly why he wants me to be a Muslim and yeah I that's my story, I guess. Um, 
there's probably more stuff I can share and there's probably stuff I'll think about uh, when I'm editing the video, but right now that's just what comes to mind and I hope this story resonated with you. I hope it answered some questions. I guess it wasn't that crazy of a story, but it's really just me trying to tell you guys how I went from being so unhappy to being full of love and happiness and life and energy and I'm just so grateful that I found Islam and I feel like it's changed me for the better. It's all so simple and it doesn't need to be complicated. All you have to do is, you know, follow these commandments and everything else kind of just comes to us. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and for giving me a platform to share my story on. Let me know in the comments below any video recommendations, any videos that you would like to see from me in the future. And, you know, inshallah, I can get to them and I can put out some more content for you guys. Um, again, thank you for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.